I want to tap into obviously Jackie Kennedy because I think Jackie Kennedy mm-hmm. has an amazing story behind it and a really eye-opening way for people to understand about opioid prevention. And that is something that I want you, Natalia, to speak from your own words about Jackie Kennedy and Luke and his beautiful story and how it kind of led you guys to where you are today. It was, you know, something that I couldn't talk about for a long time. And again, I think with our songwriting, it really helped me to be able to be vocal about it and be open about it so other people can hopefully relate and understand that they're not alone going through this. But it's a very isolating thing to to lose someone to opioids. Opioids, oh, I can't even speak. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I get nervous. Sorry. You're okay. It's a very hard thing to lose someone to an overdose and it can be really isolating and really hard to talk about. And so the Luke Love Foundation was created by Luke's mother for people to go and just be open and talk about it, about grieving and just understanding each other's feelings going through it. And yeah, for me, I think the most cathartic thing was writing about it and being able to perform it and having people come up to both of us after and explain what they went through, whether it was a loss of a relationship or really losing someone. And it was just a really helpful experience for me and for you. Yeah. How old were you guys when this all happened? I, 18. 18. Yeah, 18. Yeah. Um, and I think, you know, for the Luke Love Foundation, I think what is so special about what um, Luke's mom is doing is she's starting this organization and trying to raise money to make Narcan more available to people. Yeah. Um, and it's ideally her goal is to have it be so readily available that if something were to happen that you have it in your fridge or your neighbor has it in his fridge. And I think that would prevent so many premature deaths. And I think in the entertainment industry, in any industry, in any walk of life, you know, sadly we've lost so many people, so many young, beautiful, amazing people to the opioid crisis and something as simple as having one medication in your fridge can save someone's life and it's yeah. such an it's it seems so like polarizing to think that but it's true and so it's definitely an organization that we support so much and we hope that um that medication can become more readily available to people like around the world for somebody who might not know necessarily what Narcon does, can you explain that a little bit better? Yeah, it's um, it stops the receptors in your body from accepting the drug or whatever yeah. you're overdosing from, and it can like really bring you back. It's it basically that you inhale reverses the effects of an overdose for opio- opioids. Um, which is amazing which is yeah which is amazing and I think that the more people you know for even for myself I didn't know that Narcon existed you know and I think that it's a a wonderful thing for people to know especially if they are struggling or dealing with somebody Mm -hmm. who um, is going through an addiction and you know necessarily needs the help um, but doesn't know where to get it at least you know that you feel like you have something in the house to be able to take care of all yeah. needs and it's um, something that hospitals carry and most ambulances carry but you know sometimes that can take time so it's something that works most of the time so it's something that I think is really important that people are aware of because it can save people's lives and you know sadly in LA you know there's you hear about it very often and I think in a lot of places you do but sometimes we'll wake up and be like oh my gosh like that that remember that kid that we bumped into at that restaurant like he was so young and then now he's gone and so I think that this foundation is definitely like shedding light on all of that and um Luke's mom has done an amazing job well it's amazing and I'm I'm so proud of you girls for even putting out the song and being able to, you know, talk so fearlessly about Luke's story because he was a wonderful part of your life and he sounds like he was a wonderful person 
and yeah. you know the legacy sort of lives on and being able to help another through what his mother and the foundation is doing and I think it's really important it's important to knowledge is power right and not a lot of people know about these things and so sometimes it can be really difficult to speak about them but when you do speak about them you start to be the solution for somebody who may have never knew that there was a solution you know and that's exactly what you both are doing. I want to tap into like wrapping it up a bit because you have such an amazing journey and I could probably talk to you guys forever, but <laughs> the last couple of songs that you guys have just released, even just forget you and hurt. They talk about relationships and relationships are seem like they're a really important thing in you guys' life. The relationship you two have together is so strong that you feel comfortable, but what have your relationships been like, you know, with your loved ones or your, your lovers that have kind of brought you to this place to write this music? I mean, they're definitely from different experiences from over the years. Yeah, I think, you know, especially when you're in your formative years, you know, those relationships that you have with your lovers and your partners can be so impactful on you for the rest of your life. And I think that for us, when we write about things, we write about music and we write about songs, um, a lot of it sounds like we're writing about our partners or our lovers, but it can be interpreted in any way. You know, it could be something that we wrote about our relationship with ourselves or with each other or a love song I wrote about my cat. You know, you never know what it could be exactly about. Um, but I think it's difficult to maintain relationships with the life that we live, or at least that's how I've always felt it because I think it can come across as being selfish for me where I'm like my priority right now is my music and my work and Natalia <laughs> and my <laughs> life and so I don't I haven't always had room you know to mm. deal with other stuff and so I think yeah. that's why we've been writing so much <laughs> about that yeah I think hurt especially just came from a place where we were both looking at each other kind of go through a really different relationships <laughs> that it always gets confusing that you know we were seeing each other get hurt and watching each other be such a great person to someone else and it just not being reciprocated yeah and I think you know we kind of went through this thing at the same time without really admitting it to each other that we were in unhealthy relationships but we were you know I would say to her be like that was not right what he said to you that wasn't okay and yeah. she would do the same thing to me but we couldn't take our own advice but we could give it to each other and so I think after we had left independently those situations we sat down and we were like you know what we should write about that because I don't think either either of us realized our own situation worth. yeah or our own worth at the time until later even though we were telling each other constantly <laughs> but I don't think that yeah. we had that realization until later 